Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't. Hello, Cuban writer here, and on this 4th of July week, I decided it might be appropriate to review Patriot. Patriot is a series that I discovered on Amazon a few months ago when I was visiting my parents in Florida. Uh, my mother has a device attached to the TV. I forget whether it's called a Roku or something else. But anyway, she had been watching Patriot on it, and I saw a bit of an episode, and I thought, well, that looks interesting. I think I'd like to check it out. So when I got back home, well, I didn't see it right away. There were other shows to see, but I finally got around to it. And I have to say, I'm really glad that I did. This really is the golden age of television. We're seeing shows now that we never would have seen when I was a kid. The problem with regular network TV is they kind of have to play it safe. They can't experiment too much or go too far outside of the box. But now that we have these streaming channels, like the Amazon Prime videos and shows that they have, and the Netflix dramas and whatnot, they can't afford to play it safe. They have to think outside the box in order to attract the viewership that the networks used to have. So, as a consequence of this, we're getting some really interesting stuff, the likes of which I've never seen before. Patriot tells a story that's somewhat familiar at first glance. There's an intelligence agent in the field, He's assigned a mission, something goes wrong, the mission goes sideways, and then he's got to fix it. But it engages this familiar song with completely unfamiliar dance steps. This show almost defies classification. It has elements of many categories of show, but it doesn't purely represent any of them. So I have to be careful when deciding what classification to give it when describing it to an audience. For instance, it has elements of a drama, of a character study, of a comedy, but none of these to the exclusion of other genres that might be used to describe it. Despite this being a completely unconventional show, I think I have to describe it as a comedy. A comedy where nobody's telling jokes. It relies on the coincidences and absurdities of life to relay its humor. Often the humor is ironic in nature. Sometimes it's a very cynical kind of humor that's making observations about our world. It exaggerates things just slightly, just enough, so that we can laugh at them without exaggerating them to such a degree that we find them completely preposterous. In this way, it preserves its drama elements without sacrificing its humor elements. This is not the kind of show that you can sit back and laugh out loud at, but it is the kind of show that gives you the wry smile and the nod of acknowledgement as it discusses things that exist in our world and that are utterly absurd. Every performance on this show is superb, but I want to call out certain ones in particular. Michael Dorman shines as the damaged intelligence officer, John Tavner, who has been worn down by the terrible things he's been required to do as part of his career, who wants nothing more than to get out of the intelligence service, but who can't bring himself to disappoint the people who are relying on him. As such, he becomes a more and more agonized and damaged individual throughout the series. We really sympathize with his plight even as he's doing unspeakable horrors to people in the name of patriotism and loyalty to his family and country. Terry O'Quinn plays Tom Tavner, who sends his sons into the field in the hopes of salvaging a damaged mission. He clearly loves his sons, but he clearly loves his duty to country even more. He is willing to sacrifice his sons in order to achieve what he sees as the greater good. Part of this stems from the fact that he believes he has failed in his capacity as an intelligence officer, and he cannot live with the idea that he has created a worse situation for the country as a result of his failures. Kurtwood Smith 
shines as Leslie Claret, a civilian businessman who happens to be John's boss as he's working undercover in an engineering firm as a piping specialist. Leslie is the kind of boss you love to hate, but the show really challenges us and also trusts us to understand Leslie as an antagonist while also making us sympathetic towards him and showing us why he's actually correct about all of the things that he's doing, even as we don't like the way that he does them. It's a terrific performance, and it's really one of the places where the show shines. Michael Chernus does a great job as Edward Tavner, John's brother on the show. If anyone can be described as an actual hero, it is John's brother. He is willing to do anything necessary in order to save his brother and to help his father. At least anything that isn't morally reprehensible. He draws the line at murder, and that's when we know that he is an apple who has fallen far from the tree. He understands that asking his brother John to commit assassinations in the field is way too damaging to his brother. Aliette Ophame, and apologies if I'm mispronouncing her name, plays Detective Agatha Albans, and she does a superb job as a competent, no-nonsense detective who's struggling to unravel a series of violent incidents that occurred in her country while John was there undercover. The detective has an unusual way of settling disagreements with other people. She offers to play a game of Rochambeau, or as we call it in the States, Paper, Scissors, Rock. She uses this to settle disagreements and to get her way. She's apparently a 10th level chess master at this particular game of Paper, Scissors, Rock, which I always consider to be one of chance. Maybe it is, but on the show it's one of skill, and one of the most thrilling confrontations on the show is a game of Paper, Scissors, Rock. You know a show is good when Paper, Scissors, Rock has the same dramatic impact as a good martial arts sequence. I've said this about a couple of shows recently that have had the sense to do good casting and have excellent directors, but there's really no bad performance on Patriot. Every single actor you see does a great job of portraying their situation realistically, even when that situation drifts into the absurd. I can't really pretend that Patriot is going to be a show for everyone. It is so different from everything else that's on TV that it's hard to say that it will have wide appeal. But I still feel comfortable recommending it because it is such a high quality production telling such an interesting story in an interesting way that we don't typically see that even if you end up not liking the show, I think you will still appreciate aspects about it as being worthwhile pieces of art. I've thought about what score to give this show, and I have decided that it deserves five out of five American flags. I can't really think of a single thing I would do differently to improve the show. I really think it is a perfectly sculpted piece of art, perhaps not the art everyone would choose to see, but having seen it will immediately recognize its value and well-deserved place in the museum of our culture. That's my take on The Patriot. This is Cuban Writer signing out. I'll catch you next time. But you'll look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. Give me your answer to I'm half crazy All for the love